Hey guys, what's up? And this is going to be a series of videos I'm making called Brian Loves. And this video I'm going to be talking about a band that I fucking love so much. And they're called My American Heart. And this band is amazing. I love this band so much. Uh, they have a special place in here because it's just I've been listening to this band for probably the last five years or so. And they've never ever really let me down. Um... I guess I should start off, um, they're a five-piece band from San Diego, California. Now, the way I found out about these guys was, I think I was on Pure Volume, probably when Pure Volume just kind of first started. I think they were on the front page. I read on there that the description of them, they, they were like a, a five-piece band and they were, and was like filled with like 13 and 14-year-olds and I'm thinking, oh, this is this is going to be funny, so, so let me check it out. So I click on them and I check it out and I'm like, Oh my god. Not only are these guys pretty good, they're pretty fucking good. I mean, they're really, really, really good. And I really couldn't believe it because, I mean, when I was 13 years old, I was probably playing with my G.I. Joes and my Power Rangers and we were having a battle. Uh, these guys are 13 and they're playing in a band and they sound uh, technical, tight, uh, just... They sounded better at 13 than a lot of bands at the time, uh, you know, how they sounded. It was just like, I couldn't believe it, so I, I checked out their songs. They had, a, I believe, a five-song EP, and they were called No Way Out at the time. And I think a lot of people were hit or miss with them because uh, Larry, the singer at the time, he had, like, a really high-pitched sing, I guess, and... Uh, people either loved it or hated it, and I loved it. I thought it sounded different, their music was different. I mean, they were like a post-hardcore band, but they were a little different. Um, at least from that first initial EP, they, I don't know, they were just really good at 13, and that was maybe one of the reasons I I, I caught on to them. I, I, I used to call them prodigies, because I'm 13, and plus, another thing, when they were a five-piece, there was four... Asians in the band, four out of five, and me myself being Asian is just inspired me. It was really cool. So then, um, they're a little later. They're forced to change their name because apparently there was another band called No Way Out, and they changed their name to My American Heart. And I thought it, it was a little different, but it was really clever. I kind of I liked it a lot actually. And they then released a EP because No Way Out. Um, they were just a local band, and I don't believe they actually came up with a physical copy of the CD. I think they just had songs online that you can get, and this was, I think, their first real release, and it was just self-titled, and it was this. Um, it's so weird because initially when they put it out, it had eight songs, and then I saw them on Warp Tour, and I bought this, and it only had five songs, but... It didn't matter because I had the songs downloaded anyways, but I just wanted a physical copy because I loved them so much. And I should go back a little bit. Uh, seeing as how they were from San Diego and they, were, they weren't that big when this came out, I thought to myself, I'm never going to see this band live. Never. I mean, there's no shot. Uh, I had kind of obsessed about them for, for a little while there, and I even got my girlfriend into them, and she started liking them. And we, we just a joke, like, we're never going to see these guys live. And then in 2005, Warp Tour came along, and I don't know how it happened, but they ended up playing the whole thing. I don't know how they got the gig. I guess maybe they did a battle of the bands and won. I don't know, but they got on the whole tour. So we said we're gonna go see, we're gonna go to the Warp Tour just to see this band. How strange is that? And I remember seeing them. I, I remember going up to Jesse after they played. I'm like, man, you guys are amazing. Um, are you guys ever gonna, you know, come back here? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But you know when you ask bands that, they always say yeah, just to appease you. They're just like, yeah, whatever. So I'm thinking, okay, they didn't have any merch. By the time, I guess, they had gotten to Florida in the tour, they had sold out of everything. They only had this, and I had to buy it. I had to buy something from them, because God knew, who knew I'd ever see them again. So I'm loving this album, whatever. I'm um, thinking I'm never going to see them again, and then a miracle happens, they get on a tour, and the thing is, they had toured a lot on the West Coast, because they're from the West, so I figured I'd never see them again, and then they got on a, the Head Automatica tour, and they play um, the Culture Room, which is near me, somewhat near me, 
And I said to myself, I'm going to see them. I don't care. It didn't matter who, what toy they were on. If they were playing at a club in South Florida, I was going. It just so happens they played with Head on a Manica and this other crappy band. And then I remember reading somewhere that their van broke down and they didn't know if they were going to make it to the show. They played. I, uh, I get to the show and um, they, they were really cool. I talked to all the guys in the band. Really cool guys. Amazing. But even before then, I should back up a little bit. Um, they, they announced that they're going to get signed to... They're going to get signed. And I'm thinking, awesome. You know, that's even... That's the next big step. So uh, I'm thinking, oh, I hope that they're going to sign to Epitaph or... Fearless. I thought it was gonna be Fearless, but then they announced they're gonna, they signed to Warcon Records. Now, Warcon Records is a label founded by Kevin Lyman, who puts on the Warp Tour every year, and this was their first signed band. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, sure, why not? If it gets them to tour and stuff, whatever. Then they put out this release, The Meaning and Makeup. Now, this was probably my favorite album of. 2005 I believe it came out or 2006 and it's um it's kind of like this album but more more polished better song structures better courses um trimmed out all the fat but what made this different was they had a whole kind of rocky jazzy vibe mixed with like a post hardcore sound that I don't think really any band sounded like and they did it perfectly and uh then they got on the head automatic tour and then I, I saw these guys, um, I think twice, two times, two tours with this album, and it was just great. I was just so happy for them because they were on tours, they were playing the East. Um, this album was fantastic. Uh, they had they had two videos. Unfortunately, they never made it to MTV or M2 or any of that stuff, but anyways, I was happy. And then they announced they were making a second album called hiding inside the horrible weather Wait, it's probably their most successful album to date it had songs like uh the shake which was their single which they shot two videos for and none of them ever got played which furiates me probably their most um well-known song tired and uninspired which is uh, a really a, a slower um ballady song that um probably they're most known for um a lot of different sounding songs, a lot of bluesy stuff, but still a lot of rocky stuff. Really great album, and um, the one thing is then a lot of drama started happening. Um, not so much on this album, but a little bit before this, um, the original guitarist um, left the band and left really negatively and said some negative things about the band, and then um, during this album, their drummer left. And it's just a bunch of bunch of band members kept leaving and entering the band and it was a little weird and you just never knew if they were stable or not. And um, the worst thing happens, their label folds, which happens all the time, happened to the starting line, happened to many bands, Midtown, and then, um, so they're left labelless and I read that um, they're in limbo this whole time because it's all this, um, they're, they're, they can't really sign to another label, it's just stuff that they're just out of their control, which sucks and happens to a lot of bands. And then, um, I'm thinking nothing of it, I hear that they're making demos, and these demos that they put out were amazing, super, super awesome stuff. And, and then the worst thing happens, I find out that Jesse, the guitar player, probably the main songwriter, uh, decided he was leaving the band and once I had heard that I knew this band was done because Larry's voice is amazing but without that bluesy guitar stuff that Jesse was doing I knew it was over and then maybe a month or two later they decided they were disbanding and totally sucked because I have so many great memories of this band I mean I love them no band has sounded like this band to this date thanks my American heart for the memories Thanks guys for watching. Brian loves My American Heart. So I play, this is Jesse, we play for a band called My American Heart, and uh, thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it.